Good afternoon. My name is Rob Fleming. I'm the Minister of Transportation and Infrastructure for the province of BC, and it is my great pleasure to welcome everyone and thank you all for joining us today to celebrate the start of a major construction project, the Broadway Subway Project. I am here at the Legislative Press Theatre, grateful to be joining you from the territory of the Lekwungen speaking peoples, the Songhees and Esquimalt nations. And I'd like to acknowledge that this project is taking place in the traditional territory of the Musqueam, Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh peoples. Before we begin this virtual groundbreaking celebration, it is my great pleasure to introduce our speaker lineup for today. Joining us is the Honourable Catherine McKenna, Federal Minister of Infrastructure and Communities, Mayor of Vancouver, Kennedy Stewart, and TransLink Interim CEO, Gigi Chen Kuo. I'd also like to recognize my cabinet colleagues who are attending virtually this afternoon. We have with us today, Environment and Climate Change Minister, George Heyman, who is the MLA for Vancouver Fairview, and the minister responsible for TransLink. My colleague, Bowen Ma, the Minister of State for Infrastructure and the MLA for North Vancouver Lonsdale. Attorney General David Eby, MLA for Vancouver Point Grey and Melanie Mark, Minister of Advanced Education, Skills and Training, and the MLA for Vancouver Mount Pleasant. Now, to start us off, it is my great pleasure to introduce the Honourable Catherine McKenna, Federal Minister of Infrastructure and Communities, to say a few words on behalf of the Government of Canada. Uh, well, thank you very much, uh, Minister Fleming. It's great to be joining you, uh, unfortunately, virtually, uh, but I am coming to you from uh, the traditional territory of the Algonquin and Anishinaabe peoples. Um, it's great to have uh, a lot of friends here. Uh, great to see you, Mayor Kennedy. Uh, we, uh, Mayor Kennedy Stewart, sorry. Uh, we've done many, many announcements, uh, together as well as, uh, Gigi Chen Kuo, uh, doing lots of things with TransLink too, which is great. Uh, as well as I see lots of other folks, uh, Minister Heyman, it's always good to see you. I don't see you as much. Um, as well as a number of uh, other ministers. Um, look, it's been a really hard time. I don't think there's any way to sugar sugar coat it, um, but we will get out of this pandemic. Uh, and when we do that, we all know uh, that we have lessons to be learned and we have a huge opportunity to build back better. During the pandemic, my focus has been on how do you get things built? How do you get shovels in the ground? How do you move forward uh, to invest in projects that create immediate jobs and economic growth that help tackle climate change uh, by reducing emissions or building resilience, and also that build more inclusive communities for all? We've approved over 3,400 projects worth more than $4.6 billion since the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, we also doubled the gas tax fund. Uh, thankfully, we've renamed that because gas and tax is probably the worst branding ever to call it the Canada Community Building Fund, which is much more appropriate, uh, $2.2 billion. And I know that that is something that makes a big difference um, in uh, communities uh, across the country, but also uh, I'm sure Mayor, uh, Mayor Stewart has some nice things to say about that, about continuing construction at a time we need it. Uh, we created the COVID-19 resilience stream uh, where the federal government uh, is investing 80 cents in every dollar in a whole range of areas, including some areas under provincial jurisdiction to help support um, addressing um, vulnerabilities as a result of COVID-19 and beyond from better ventilations in schools to long-term care homes to beyond. Um, today's a great day though. Um, it, it, we're celebrating a really important milestone in the lives of so many folks uh, in uh, the greater Vancouver area. The beginning of construction of the Broadway subway project, an extension of the Millennium Line. In 2018, Prime Minister Trudeau announced federal funding for the extension of the Millennium Line. A lot has changed since then, uh, but the commitment to this project remains. I'm certainly excited to see uh, another step reached in building the Broadway subway, a convenient new transportation option along one of the city's busiest corridors. This is clearly much needed in Vancouver. That's why we committed close to $900 million for its construction. To support continuous growth in Canada, it is, it is important that we strategically invest in both new and existing public transit infrastructure. 36 years ago, the Skyway train was built, paving the way for growth in and around Vancouver. 
En 2018, le premier ministre Justin Trudeau a annoncé un financement fédéral pour le prolongement de la ligne Millennium. Beaucoup de choses ont changé, mais notre engagement à l'égard de ce projet demeure inchangé. Je suis enthousiaste de voir une autre étape importante franchie dans la construction du métro Broadway, une nouvelle solution de transport pratique le long de l'un des corridors les plus fréquentés de la ville. Ce projet est très attendu à Vancouver. C'est pourquoi nous avons engagé plus presque 900 millions de dollars pour sa construction. Pour soutenir la croissance continue au Canada, il est important d'investir stratégiquement dans les infrastructures de transport en commun nouvelles et existantes. Il y a 36 ans, le SkyTrain a été construit, ouvrant la voie à la croissance de Vancouver et de ses environs. Today, we celebrate the beginning of the work to extend its route, adding 5.7 kilometers and six stations to the SkyTrain's Millennium, uh, Millennium Line. People of Vancouver area have come to rely on the SkyTrain. This new SkyTrain subway line between VCC Clark Station to Broadway and Arbutus will allow people to travel more quickly than the current bus route. It will also provide an increase in ridership capacity by 250% and facilitate connections to other major subway lines, including service to Richmond, Burnaby, Coquitlam, and Vancouver Center. Everyone knows that cities need good public transit to thrive. People want to live and work near public transit. It helps essential workers get to work. And for many, it is the only viable option. Those that are most likely to use public transit are women, new Canadians, young people, and people who can't afford any other option. It's of course also an environmentally responsible way to commute and help drive us to net zero emissions. Transportation represents 20% of Canada's emissions. We need to tackle that and we need to do this in clean ways. And we also have a huge economic opportunity uh, to produce uh, the uh, infrastructure needed right here in Canada. Just this February, I announced with the Prime Minister of a federal investment of close to $15 billion in new funding. That's in addition to the $26 billion already committed to provinces and territories in public transit. This is to accelerate shovel-ready, job-creating public transit projects across the country. We've had some good announcements in Ontario, but there's a lot more opportunities, including right there uh, in Vancouver as well as a new stream for permanent transit funding of $3 billion annually. We're also focused on our first ever active transportation fund and our first electric bus fund. And I know Mayor Kennedy Stewart is always looking for more electric buses. In BC, we've invested $4.3 billion in 550 projects through our infrastructure programs, including refurbishments to the West Coast Express, new electric buses, and trail enhancements. We also recently announced funding for the Delu Dene, uh, Dene Council Multipurpose Cultural Building. This was a hugely meaningful and important project for the Lower Post First Nation, and I was really happy that we were able to get it done. Look, we will get through this. It's been a really hard time, but as Minister of Infrastructure and Communities, I've seen that Uh, Canadians come together at times of crisis, and that's true in British Columbia, that's true in the greater Vancouver area. We're going to continue to support Canadians. 80 cents of every dollar that is being invested to support Canadians through the pandemic is coming from the federal government. And in Budget 2021, we announced a plan to conquer COVID-19 in the short term, punch our way out of the COVID-19 recession in the medium term, and build a more resilient Canada one that is equitable, prosperous, innovative, and that hits net zero emissions by 2050. That's everything from affordable and accessible childcare, reaching $10 a day in the next five years, and a shout out to BC for being one of the first provinces to indicate your interest. Uh, we've extended the wage subsidy, rent subsidy, and lo lockdown support through the fall. We're making investments in tourism businesses to help them recover and support festivals and cultural events. But we're also building back better for the long term. Massive investments in clean infrastructure that will make a huge difference 
uh, that will help tackle climate change, but also will create more equitable and inclusive communities. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you very much to everyone who has put so much work into making this project happen. And you know what? I can't wait to get back out to Vancouver someday when it's safe to do so. Thanks. Thank you so much, uh, Minister McKenna. I uh, appreciate your words about uh, Canadians staying strong together and being in this together during the pandemic. And I also want to uh, just express our appreciation here in British Columbia for your leadership and your passion. Uh, for making uh, Canada a recognized uh, international uh, low-carbon leader, for uh, sharing uh, the province of BC's goals as well, for making uh, our economies uh, green uh, powerhouse economies, and for um, being a champion for public transit infrastructure as demonstrated today uh, with, this, uh, with this project and others to come. Um, I, um, I want to say a few words on behalf of uh, Premier Horgan and uh, our government. Um, about uh, the benefits of this project. Uh, one of the first things, of course, that comes to mind uh, in an area like this, uh, this part of Vancouver and the region is, is uh, how can we reduce travel times? And this project is gonna deliver uh, on that uh, uh, for residents of Vancouver and those traveling to the city uh, to work. Um, prior to COVID-19, the 99B line route along Broadway was the busiest route in Canada, some say in North America, not sure I can prove that, but one of the busiest on this continent and uh, could not effectively meet demand. It's a great problem to have for a public transit authority uh, like TransLink to have that much uh, passenger demand, but unfortunately for those using it, uh, buses were caught in traffic congestion and people were often passed by with full buses. That is why this project is so important as a solution. Uh, once completed the trip from VCC Clark Station to Arbuta Station, uh, at that terminus will take just 11 minutes and it will carry uh, as many as three times the uh, current uh, public transit ridership uh, along the Broadway uh, uh, route. Um, as an extension, and as the minister said, as an extension of the Malone line, it will connect seamlessly to our public transit network. Uh, it will, at Commercial Drive, of course, connect with the Expo line at, uh, at Broadway City Hall. It will connect with the Canada line and it will integrate with the regional uh, bus network delivering uh, uh, un untold benefits. This is all going to make it easier to live, work, travel and shop and access services on the Broadway corridor. And this is a corridor, of course, that is already a host to uh, dynamic uh, clusters of tech jobs, uh, healthcare services and research-based companies. This will uh, allow an unprecedented amount of investor confidence and interest uh, in what is already one of the most important job centers uh, in the region. It will support uh, housing development, business development, and a lot of opportunities for us as a government to add density uh, both above and adjacent to the stations that we will be building uh, in the future. It's also a key strategic infrastructure investment that is perfectly timed to support our government's economic recovery plan. For the first time ever, my ministry now has six concurrent major projects on the go that will help uh, support the safe and efficient movement of people and goods across British Columbia. And we know that investing in transportation networks creates good paying jobs during construction. It stimulates supply chains and businesses and activates economic uh, opportunity. This project will deliver 13,000 direct and indirect jobs during the construction of Broadway subway. And as we build public infrastructure, we're also making sure that we deliver meaningful benefits uh, to British Columbians by creating good paying local jobs, uh, by creating uh, training opportunities. I know Minister Mark will nod along with me in agreement on this because sure, her passion for supporting apprenticeships and trades in heavy construction um, uh, deserves no introduction. This will build a skilled and diverse construction trade workforce for tomorrow, a human benefit to this uh, capital project uh, that uh, that uh, will uh, change lives. Um, finally, uh, and most importantly, and Minister McKenna touched upon this, this project will help us deliver on the considerable effort our government is making and perhaps the most important effort we can all make no matter where we live on this planet. Uh, it will contribute to our efforts to tackle climate change. And we know uh, Minister Heyman is here through Clean BC, his work to reduce greenhouse gas emissions uh, does rely to a considerable extent uh, on public transit, a hugely important and readily available solution to reducing GHGs. 
More people choosing public transit, fewer personal vehicles on the road. These are good things. They reduce air pollution, they reduce congestion, and they reduce our carbon footprint. And with the start of major construction on the Broadway subway line, we can now officially say this is happening. Uh, we're building for tomorrow. We're modernizing our transportation networks. We're supporting a strong economic recovery, and we're investing in the workforce of tomorrow with a legacy of fast, efficient, and affordable public transportation that's accessible for everyone. So thank you very much. It's now my great pleasure to introduce my friend, the Mayor of Vancouver, Kennedy Stewart, to say a few words, and he will be introducing Gigi after, uh, after he makes remarks. Great, thank you very much, Minister Fleming. Uh, before, I uh, before I continue, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm speaking to you from the unceded traditional territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Sabletooth people, and I want to thank them for their generosity to all who inhabit their lands. Um, you know, uh, these days, do you get really nervous when there's a lot of <laughs> ministers on a Zoom call, or do you get really excited? And today is definitely an excited day. I think uh, a great day and really happy to be here. Um, so many ministers on one call, it's great. On the federal side, Minister McKenna, thank you, thank you, thank you for your continued leadership and advocacy and putting up for my incessant lobbying <laughs> for more investments in transit. Uh, this is a fantastic day uh, that we've, we, we're really showing what it works, when, how it works when all three levels come together to deliver for Canadians. And not only does this help us with uh, infrastructure, but sets us up for climate success and uh, for long-term investments in people and communities. Uh, on the provincial side, Ministers Fleming, Heyman, E.B. Mark, and Ma, I've had the great pleasure of working with you all on different projects, but this one's going to be hard to top as it's great news for not just our city, but the entire region. So thank you uh, to your government, both governments, for making this happen. I am so excited to finally kick this project off. Uh, people have been waiting for it uh, for a while, and here it is uh, off to a great start today. It's only possible because of our strong partnership and the uh, work we've done with the federal and provincial governments that, that, again, shows what we can accomplish by working together. I can't overstate the, important, the importance that the Broadway line has on Vancouverites commuting uh, through the Broadway corridor. The Broadway line will provide great relief to our highly used transit system and give more options to riders. But it's an amazing project because, uh, as mentioned, it goes way beyond uh, moving commuters. It also help, help, helps us tackle the, the housing crisis by building density along the line. It helps us tackle the climate emergency, and it is a huge step towards our economic recovery. And I also want to stress that this isn't just a Vancouver project. The Broadway Corridor is the second largest employment center in British Columbia, providing more than 85,000 jobs. So those jobs are employing people from right across the region. And when you look ahead to the completion of this line, as well as the Langley to Surrey line, you can begin to see how our entire region can be connected by fast, reliable and affordable rapid transit. So here in Vancouver, the Broadway subway will, will help thousands more people to move in or to move to or stay in Vancouver because it will allow us to create livable and walkable communities just steps away from transit. And for those that commute from outside of our city, the project will lower the number of cars on the road and reduce congestion for existing commuters. And we know that when it comes to the climate emergency, we need to act now. The Broadway line means it means 14 million fewer cars on the road every year by 2030. And it's hard to get your head around that. 14 million fewer cars on the road every year by 2030. And if that isn't enough, the Broadway subway will create thousands of much needed jobs that are critical as we continue along our path to pandemic recovery. And that's just during construction. Already the Broadway corridor helps power our entire uh, province's economy by producing 14 billion in gross domestic product every year. An investment like the Broadway subway will only grow that number. So personally, I'm so honored to be part of the team that is making this happen and really wanna deeply thank the current and past councils for their dedication to this project because I know it was heavy lifting. So uh, with that, I'd like to introduce uh, TransLink interim CEO, uh, Chen Kuo. Thank you, Mayor Stewart, and thank you to all the project partners who are here today to mark this exciting milestone occasion, the start of construction on what will soon be the latest addition to our regional transportation network. I would like to begin by acknowledging by name the 10 local First Nation communities located within the TransLink service area. 
Lakatesi, Quantlin, Quiquitlam, Matsqui, Musqueam, Kikite, Semiamu, Squamish, Sawasin, Slewatooth, on whose territory we work, operate, and serve each day. It can't be emphasized enough that this is a monumental day for the future of Metro Vancouver. Transit in the region looks very different today than it did a couple of years ago. And a couple of years from now, it will look very different as well. Ridership is down in urban areas all over the world and Metro Vancouver, unfortunately, is no different. But I do firmly believe that ridership recovery in Metro Vancouver is imminent because a robust transit system has always been a key part of life for those who live, work, study and play within our region. Before the pandemic, transit ridership was indeed bursting at the seams. For five consecutive years, Metro Vancouver was among the top regions in all of North America for annual ridership growth. In a five-year period, Translake Sportings grew by an unprecedented 27%, hitting new record high ridership numbers every single year. And even throughout the pandemic, transit has been a lifeline for roughly 200,000 people who have relied on our services every day, including essential workers in all industries. And in the future, even accounting for shifts in working from home, our latest modeling suggests that ridership could recover to between 70 to 90% of pre-pandemic levels by the end of this year, once the vast majority of this region has been vaccinated. So when factoring in projected regional population growth, transit should not only rebound by the time the Broadway sub subway project is in service, it will likely surpass pre-pandemic levels. So we need to be ready for that future. And there's no better way to do that than by providing relief to the busiest bus corridor in the region. Minister Fleming is correct. Before the pandemic, the Broadway corridor was home to not only the busiest bus route in Metro Vancouver, but the busiest bus route in all of Canada and the United States. I know it's been a while since we've seen this happen, but just imagine BC Place fully packed. Now add 3,000 more people. That's about how many boardings there were on the 99B line on an average weekday. So if that sounds like a lot of people using the B line, when this SkyTrain extension is in service, it will be able to move more than three times the daily capacity of the 99B line. So that will enable commuters to get out of their cars and into an emission-free, fast, frequent, and reliable option like the Broadway subway instead. In the short term, construction of the Broadway subway project will create jobs and help our region recover from the economic fallout of this pandemic. And in the long term, it will provide an excellent rapid transit option to better connect our region, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and support economic prosperity. So on behalf of TransLink, I look forward to continuing to work with all of our partners to make this extension a success. I would now like to welcome back Minister Fleming. Thank you very much, uh, Gigi, and uh, that wraps up the formal part of this event. Uh, I want to thank everyone again for uh, joining us for this virtual celebration. No uh, shovels spray-painted gold uh, for this one, but uh, uh, a safe one and an exciting day uh, for everybody in the region and for public transit. Uh, we'll now move on to the Q&A portion. Uh, and to those reporters on the line, uh, you can direct your questions to whomever you like. Uh, this is a technically complex project as well, so there may be some things that require the details you're looking for. We have a media line desk uh, with uh, some of the engineering and technical staff uh, as well to answer those. So I'll turn things over to the moderator for the Q&A portion. Thank you very much. It appears that you have answered all the questions that reporters had. We can conclude the event. Fantastic. Well, let me just uh, thank once again, uh, Minister McKenna for joining us from Ottawa. It's a pleasure to have you beam in with us today, Mayor Stewart and my colleagues. Uh, and uh, Gigi, thank you for your leadership at TransLink during a very difficult time. Um, your, your, your staff and personnel uh, deemed essential have uh, kept uh, people throughout Metro Vancouver safe and we appreciate uh, their work. Thank you very much and have a great afternoon.